Welcome to this Intracom video of the comparison of the Stratasys Uprint SE Plus versus the 3D System Cube Pro Trio, which markets at a quarter of the price. During the comparison, we will not look into detailed specifications of speeds and feeds, but compare and look at different aspects with regard to real-world usability. So when we look at the Uprint SE Plus, it's bigger in terms of height than the Cube Pro, but does have a similar overall footprint, and certainly heavier by some 30 kilograms. Our experience on general hands-on, this can be put down to as clearly more robustly constructed design, especially in terms of the attention to the fully sealed and controlled heated chamber. From a connectivity perspective, the Uprint SE comes with a network connection RJ45. But also of note is within the device is the print server, with the ability to spool jobs as well as manage the print queue. It is also clear by the addition of the uninterruptible power supply that great consideration has been given to ensuring safe shutdown in the event of power outage. The Uprint comes standard with one tray made up of two loading bays, one for the model material and the second for the soluble support material. There is an option for a second tray, which effectively doubles that capacity, and the second tray will auto-switch, ensuring no interruption in the printing process. The Cube Pro features a small touchscreen panel and has a modern and aesthetically appealing look and feel. Dimensionally, as mentioned before, similar in footprint, but certainly smaller in height than the Uprint SE. Connectivity-wise, the Cube Pro has wireless, a USB host port for a USB stick, and a USB device port for a dedicated printer connection. The build chamber size is slightly bigger, as I mentioned, than the Uprint SE, although some restrictions in the X-axis are due to the design of the three nozzles is quite evident. Let's look at the real-life usability, loading of the material. The Uprint has a spool with a silica gel insert and is fully air sealed and enclosed in a cassette, ensuring no moisture is absorbed into the ABS material. A sensor detects filament usage, as well as encoded to detect colour and the material type. Uprint SE has a fully automated loading process just requires insertion of the cartridge into the tray, and then a single press of a button to load. The Cube Pro has a similar fully enclosed cartridge to the Uprint SE. There is just the need to remove a transportation screw that is removed prior to loading. The detection chip monitors filament status such as the amount of available material, but unlike the Uprint SE, does not detect the filament colour or the material type. This needs to be manually entered later. Loading the cartridge is a completely manual process with the Cube Pro in terms of feeding the material all the way until the nozzle or jet grabs the filament. Looking at the software, the Uprint SE Plus comes with Stratasys Catalyst EX software. The top menu tab reflects the process for preparing your design for printing. So if we look at first the tab General, this gives general machine status, such as time remaining to print. If we look at Properties, this gives control over layer resolution, as well as control settings for the use of the soluble support material. 
Both machines have use of Solibon's support material, although we will look closer at these differences a little later in the video. The tab orientation, giving full control over all three axes with features like automatic orientation and manually entered specific adjustments. The section part is an interesting feature, allowing the opportunity to print larger models than the build chamber itself by splitting the models into multiple parts. When we process the file, this allows you to simulate the model, showing the layers of the model and the support material and allowing capturing of issues prior to sending to print. We can now start the print directly or add to pack, which is the feature allowing multiple print jobs to be combined within the limits of the build chamber. The status tab shows the print jobs and the queue and with the right admin rights you're able to manage the priority of the print jobs. And finally with the printer services, this is effectively an administration panel with passwords, history logs and software updates. The key feature of the help menu is the dynamic search, allowing keyword instant lookup for key information. There are two ways to activate the print job. At the device, if the print job is already sent, or the device can be set to waiting to print, which will then print as soon as the file is sent. Looking at the 3D Systems Q Pro Trio software, the printed configuration shows that it has three print jets or nozzles, as well as the ability to use ABS and PLA materials, and clearly has a wider range of colors than the Uprint SE+. Note that the Q-Pro uses PLA material as support as opposed to specific special support material with the Uprint SE. It's also worth noting that the Q-Pro has a pop-up caution when using PLA and ABS combinations for the model, suggesting a lower print quality if you're going to combine both material types and then also suggesting a better quality just by selecting one material type, such as ABS or PLA. QPro does have the ability to print with multiple colors, albeit the model design needs to be sectioned correctly to allow this to happen. The actual available build area shown is smaller than the overall chamber size. Seems due to the three jets mounted across the x-axis. The default is set to single color. So when selecting multicolor, all you need to do is deselect single color. When you select Build, it goes to a far richer range of settings than is available on the Uprint SE. Looking at the layer resolution, we see from the thinnest setting of 70 microns versus on the SE, 254 microns. The default setting is 200 microns. In addition, there is a wide range of print strength and pattern settings for the model construction. Also, we noted control over the raft materials, as well as support type using either points or lines to attach the support material. Advanced settings gives even a finer level of control in terms of the layers and the finishing options available to you. Sending the print, in this case via Wi-Fi, is shown on the device receiving the file. Looking at the help functionality, it's HTML based with the normal quick search based features you would expect to see. The print job starts by laying down a few layers of soluble support material as base is fixed to the tray and then applies model material and soluble material as defined in the print job. The QPro has a more involved process requiring the application of a glue to be applied to a glass renewable tray. It's recommended that the application of two glue layers are used, covering the area size needed to support the model size.
The printing process is similar to the Uprint SC, albeit it has the ability to use the three nozzles or jets, and would if selected use PLA as the material for the support. The Cube Pro does have a heated chamber, but it's not anywhere near as sealed as we'd seen on the Uprint SE, and as we can see it accessing easily from the top here, looking directly at the three jets mounted across the X-axis. So let's look at the post-processing with the Uprint SE Plus. There are differences here to note. The Uprint SE Plus has a wave wash system, fully automated, to dissolve the soluble support material. It then will go into a rinse cycle and drain the fluid down into a standard drainage system. This allows you then to take your part out, which is then completely ready for use with no other post-processing requirements needed. With the Cube Pro Trio, post-processing requires removal of the glass build plate, and then to release the parts, you need to run under warm water for approximately two minutes peeling by hand and using the scraper to ensure the model is removed as well as all the support material is removed from the plate. There are two methods for removing the material with this process. You can use it just with warm water and then allow that to heat up to 80 degrees centigrade and leave it for approximately two days. To be fair, this only weakens the PLA material, making it easier to break the material free. The second method is using caustic soda and the use of the ultrasound. The bath is set at 60 degrees C and with the ultrasound that effectively manages it around about 80 degrees C. It is important that the room is well vented and protective gloves are used as the caustic liquid may burn bare skin as well as the vapour can be harmful. This method has similar times in terms of the Uprint SE, quoting around about three hours for the part to have the support material removed. Once that time is up, it's important that the caustic soda solution is thoroughly rinsed under a running tap for approximately two, two minutes prior to actually using the part. Looking at the printed examples of the two belt buckles, we can make some interesting observations about the quality. Firstly, the Uprint SE Plus prints consistently with great quality, with no need for in-depth understanding of the printing technology itself. A designer can create an object with all creative freedom required and the printer will print the object as expected. In our tests, we were unable with the Q-Pro Trio to produce comparable quality as with the Uprint SE Plus even when giving considerable attention to the orientation and experimenting with various print settings. In practice, there was too much time and effort to achieve any sort of usable models of the belt buckle from the test file we were using. The quality difference can be in part attributed to using the PLA and ABS material at the same time, 
and the compromise the Q-Pro Trio needs to make to work with both materials. But also we found the Q-Pro software is limited, in particular when using a PLA support material, having limited controls over the density and infill, which caused in our print samples issues with unsupported model overhangs, where distortion was evident. This quality difference between the two machines is likely to be very apparent on any model where there's a need to use the PLA support material. It is also worth noting the considerable increase in print time when using the additional nozzles, with the idle time for nozzle change being approximately 30 seconds per 30 seconds of actual print time for the sample that we were printing. The Uprint SC Plus is clearly a professional device, as should be expected by the considerably higher price tag. It simply delivers consistent good results with less effort. We see other areas where the Uprint SE further supports its professional market position, with its overall robustness of construction, the attention to detail from protecting the print nozzles with shields, to its fully enclosed and controlled heated chamber, just to name a few. Our opinion is that these two 3D printers are not really comparable in the first place. Even with the Q Pro Trio being a quarter of the price and delivering some impressive specifications, such as three nozzles, a wide range of colors, both in PLA and ABS. But when it comes to the final printed model, where the consistency, accuracy, and quality are the key importance, the Q Pro Trio simply requires too much trial and error and leaves you with a print and hope feeling. In our opinion, this is a case of, it's not what you pay for the device, it's the value of the printer model and its impact it brings to your design process. Thank you for watching this comparison. We very much look forward to receiving your feedback.